Tom, yeah, man, good question. Uh, to answer that question, and if you don't mind, what I will do is I want to answer this question um, in a public forum as well. I want to send this to my training group. So if you're watching this in the training group, Tom Demkowski has asked me this question. Anyway, Tom's asked the question, how do you deal with someone with superior back pressure and a superior hand? And by hand, I'm reading wrist flexion. So, in other words, you can't top roll him. You're being out top rolled. There's nothing you can do. Um, how do you combat a, um, a puller with this set of dominant factors over you? Um, how do you set up for that? Um, Tom asked, do you set up with loaded supination? And interestingly, Tom, my answer is no. You don't... Hey, by the way, check out, check out these eyebrows. Man, i got to trim them. Anyway. Um... <clears throat> Set up not with supination. I know that sounds super weird, but when you're talking about the biomechanics of your own hand, to set up with supination, um, that's going to enhance your shoulder drive, but it's not going to take away your opponent's access to their strength. Um, not 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 as much as you're going to need it. Okay, so the best example of this match uh, when I've done this was when I pulled Matai Orangi Hatamaris from New Zealand. We had a three-all result. Matt is a bigger guy than me. He's got more back pressure than me. He's got a better top roll than me. There was no way I was top rolling Matai Orangi. But I still took three rounds off him and it ended in a draw. The way that I did that is like this. So when you are setting up against um, someone with the big hand or the stronger hand and the stronger back pressure... Okay, in the hand and wrist, the first thing you want to do is, in fact, pronate. So you're going to pronate your hand and wrist as far as you can. You then are going to posture your body so that it's in a legal position. So, um, By the way, I'm assuming we're in the straps, too. We've, uh, you're going to need to get the straps. Okay, so you're in the strap. So you've pronated your hand. You've postured your body uh, so that it's level and the referee's happy and then what I need you to do is push your wrist forward so I'm just going to change angle so you can see it push your wrist forward as far as you can retract your thumb so instead of having your thumb up here where it might normally rest pull your thumb back as far as it possibly can I, I find that if I curl the top of my thumb down it's going to allow me to retract my thumb deeper okay and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kick my wrist back Okay. Okay. There's a few reasons why I do all these things. Okay. The reason why we're kicking our wrist back um, and retracting our thumb is we want to get as far past our opponent because the only thing that we care about off the go is being able to hard counter their pronation. You're not going to worry about the back pressure. You're not going to worry about the side pressure. They're not going there. They want to top roll you. You must defeat their pronation. If you can't defeat the pronation, this option will not work. Okay. So. In order to defeat their pronation, we need to get as far through as we can. So we retract our thumb. We kick our get when we retract our thumb. We make sure the refs are putting our thumbs together. Get our thumbs together because the top roller is probably going to be running. He's going to have his thumb bunched up like this. He's not going to be giving you room. He doesn't want a deep grip. So you retract your thumb to balance his uh, his thumb that he's hiding like this. Retract your thumb. Make sure you talk to the refs. Get them together. Now, when you kick back your wrist, and you only kick back your wrist during the strap application, during that time, really, 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 really critical time of the strap application, you have a chance to get more. Now, the strap will support whatever you give it. Now, it doesn't mean in this case that it's going to support you back here. It's actually, when you strap like this, normally, normally in a very standard strap, you've got one strap that goes around the wrist, and you've got one strap that comes across the back of the hand and goes above your wrist joint. When you strap like this, okay, imagine you're a referee strapping there like that. If I've got that, we have one strap here, and the other strap comes down here in between, right between the wrist joint. Instead of it coming down here, above your wrist joint, it's going to come down right through the middle of your wrist. This is a big deal. A really, really, really big deal, guys. When you do that, it's going to make your wrist flexion stronger. It's going to make your pronation more contained and weaker. So it's a double-edged sword. Be aware of it. So you've got to know when to do it. But this will make your wrist flexion stronger. Okay? The strap comes down there. Your supinated wrist flexion off the go is going to be mega. It's going to be really mega. So once you've then defeated the pronation, also ready-go happens. All your effort, boom, in the cup. 
you're just trying to put a hard counter, an effective hard counter against their pronation. If you get that achieved, if the if their pronation is stopped, okay, they're then going to potentially look to come inside on you. If you're just dominant there, happy days. If you're the weaker guy and you still and you can't just match them with side pressure, in that sense, you have to keep the fight about your cup versus pronation. So you concede. You roll over onto the outside of your arm. This is my hidden hook now. And you you bait them into a top roll again. You actually ease up on the cup because you know you can take it back again. So you ease up on it, allow them to go for the top roll, and then say no. And say no. And say no. And keep on sending them into that fight. As they continuously fail on that, lactic acid is going to build up in other areas as well. And slowly the scales will tip to where you are now in control. You can add active side pressure and get the job done. Like I said, the best example of this match in my history of matches is when I pulled my tight wearing heads of Morris. So you can, uh, I'll put the link to that um, below. All right, guys. Hope you hope you're well. Tom, I hope that answers your question. And uh, yeah, go crush those top rollers.